What if I told you that there is essentially a universal GPS that you can tap into that will tell you when to turn right or left and so on as you go about your journey? It will essentially give you the best next move for you on your journey towards your dream life and whatever else it is you want to accomplish. Now, this process has always been available, but very few have known about it and even less have known how to tap into it effectively. This is because we have been raised to think and move in what's called a linear fashion in our lives. And that's all well and good, but life doesn't operate in a linear way. It operates in a non linear manner. So in this video, you'll learn about this non-linear process, how to train yourself to see it more clearly, and most importantly, how to use it to activate the universal GPS that will lead you to the life you want to live, and then more and more as unfoldments come from that. So I invite you to take some notes and really pay attention as you go through this video so that you retain more of it. Learning this process and more importantly, applying what I go over here can really change the trajectory of your your life and really allow you to live the life you actually want to live. So to kick this off, I want to give you an analogy that can give us a good foundation moving forward. And so I want you to imagine that there is a river of life. And this river of life essentially is how you progress. You go further down the river and you progress more in life. It's essentially taking you to where it is you want to go. And it's ultimately the further you go on this river, the more you develop, the more you grow, uh, the more you, we can call it level up, the more achievements you, you are basically going to get and so on. Now, there are typically three ways to engage with this river and three ways that people will engage with this river. And so the first two are the most common. This is called the to me way of living and the by me way of living. Now, to me is essentially victim mode. They look at the river and they get scared. They're scared to engage with the river. They're scared to engage with life. People in this state of to me think life happens to me and are in fear and kind of lower levels of emotion most of the time, which causes them in relationship to the river, which remember, it's gonna take them ultimately to where it's gonna be good for them, to their dreams, to fulfillment, to higher levels of consciousness, etc. more ability to create reality and attract in what you want, but they get scared. Um, and they come from a fearful approach, a life happens to me, so they usually don't get in the river, they just kind of sit at the bank, never getting in the river, or if they happen to be in the river, they're holding on to a rock, or maybe on to a tree branch, basically refusing to engage with it. Now, the next level up is by me. Now, by me is life happens by me. This is kind of like the hustle and grind mode. Now, this is a mode that can yield many different results, but it comes at a sacrifice, usually to health and relationships and other areas in life. Typically, by me is used for people who want to acquire wealth, and they kind of put that above all else, and that's why those areas become sacrificed. Now, by me, instead of not engaging with the river, is like trying to fight the current of the river. So you'll see people who are in by me trying to swim upstream. Now again, remember the river is actually going to take you to places that are going to be beneficial for you, that are going to be the best next things for you. But in by me, we fight against life because it still comes from the foundation that life is unfair, life is a struggle, life is out to get me. And when you think life is out to get you and you're in the river of life, of course you're going to swim upstream. The issue again is this leads to burnout. This is why burnout happens a lot of the time because we're hustling, we're grinding, we're fighting against life and eventually we can't continue doing that. And so we just, we burn out and have to, we are almost forced into this period of rest. Now the third way to engage with the river is what's called through me. Now through me is the state we ideally want to come to and what I would invite you to come to because through me states that life happens through me. And what this means is you are working together with the river, you are working together with life, you are controlling the things that you actually have control of, but you are surrendering the rest to the universe, to God, to source, to the all, whatever you want to call it, to take care of the things that you actually can't control anyway. You see, in To Me and By Me, most people in those states try to micromanage the universe or assume the role of the universe and try and do what the universe is meant to do themselves. And of course, this leads to a lot of resistance, a lot of struggle, and a lot of problems. But in Through Me, we start to become aware of how the process works, and we start to do the work on ourselves 
side, but trust the process. We put faith in the river that it's going to take us to where we want to go, but we let go of how it's going to happen, and we simply focus on that which we can control. So essentially, the person who is in through me floats with the river and has confidence that the river, as long as they're in the right river, is going to take them to where they want to go. They focus on the things that they can control. For example, their thoughts and state of being, like not being in fear or pride, which are very prevalent in to me and by me. They focus on how they speak, which plays a big part in how you think. They focus on the actions they actually take that are in correspondence with where the river is taking them, you know, making the leaps of faith even when there's a bend in the river. And they also focus on their energy and emotional state, knowing that these are things they can control and are actually a part of their side of the co-creative process. But a big thing, and we're gonna get into this later in the video, is they surrender needing to control all of it. They let go of the how and they surrender to the river the rest of those things that they cannot control. Where in by me and to me, the one of the sticking points in these states is people in those states try to control the things that are essentially the universe's job to do. Now, to give you another analogy, let's use the GPS analogy here to paint uh, an even clearer picture of this. Essentially, when you tap into the universal GPS, when you really get connected to this and you're working from this through me place in co-creation with life, you will start to get indications like lefts and rights and U-turns and go straight from the universe. Now, this will not come into your head. If you find that, oh, I'm thinking about this and I think I should go this way because of XYZ reason and here's the checklist of all the good reasons why, that is not coming from the universe. It's most likely coming from your thinking mind and you're probably taking wrong turns quite a bit when when it comes to you actually going in a direction that will help you succeed. You see, the universal GPS works through your heart, it works through intuition, it works through gut instinct that you become um, better at the more you actually entertain it. Now with this GPS, it is like the universe telling you to take a left turn, then a right turn, and then a left turn, or whatever the turn may be. It may tell you to, hey, stay still for a while. It may tell you to take a U-turn because you've been heading in the wrong direction. But when you get good at this and you plug in the the destination you're trying to get to, which we'll get into in just a moment, you trust that the GPS is going to get you there, even if it's going down a route that confuses you. And this is the stumbling block for a lot of people, because when they start following this universal GPS, they might find that it seems to be leading them into a little bit of chaos, or it seems to be this is going to be a direction that takes me away from where I want to go, or will take me more time, and if I just went this way that my mind's telling me. But the fact of the matter is the universal GPS knows all the blocks, knows all of the obstacles, everything that would be on the way to wherever it is that you're going. And it knows how to navigate around them. It knows which stops you need to go on in order to pick up tools that you're going to need to get further down the road. It knows certain things you need to go through so that you're prepared for when you go on that bend in the river or for when you're two, three, four stops um, ahead when it comes to your destination. And so the universal GPS is aware of that. Your mind is not. Your mind can only operate from the known. It can only operate from what the data it currently has while the unknown or the universe is operating from that which you do not know at the level of mind. But it can point you in the right direction, you know, which is why we're calling it a GPS, via your intuition. One important thing to realize about this though is it will not give you five moves ahead. The mind always wants to know the full plan. The intuition will just give you the best next move. But if you take that one next best move and then the one after that and then the one after that and then the one after that, you're going to be way further ahead, much further down the river that again has your best interest at heart rather than wherever you're going to be if you try and do that with the mind GPS. You try and do that from the mind, which is probably just going to take you down a dark alley or cause you to get analysis paralysis or to be in the complete opposite direction from where you needed to go. So that is in a nutshell how this GPS works. It operates from the intuition. We use the river analogy of how being in through me is gonna help you navigate that. But let's go into how you can set a destination that then kind of plugs into this GPS so you can start moving in the ways that you want to move. Because here is a key component of this that a lot of people skip, and it's why they get very spotty results, is you are a co-creative and very intentional being. Meaning that if you have no destination in mind, you have no idea of where you want to go, and I'll explain some nuances with this as well, then it's really hard for the universe to take you there. 
right? It's like going up to a train station or a train ticket booth and going, hey, I, I want to get out of here. And they're like, well, where is it you want to go? We have all these destinations you could go to. Actually, infinite destinations. You just say where you want to go and we'll give you a ticket to there. We'll give you the GPS. It'll just head in that direction. You just got to stay on the path. And you go, um, I don't know where I want to go. I just know I don't want to be here. Well, then they can't give you a ticket and you can't get on that train. And it works the same way here. If you have no idea where you want to go, the universal GPS can't really help you because there's no destination in mind. Now, don't get caught up in the word destination because you might be like, well, life is a journey. There is no destination. I get that. But there are destinations along the journey. And so whatever that best next destination is for you, that thing that comes through your heart, a destination can even be, I don't know what my purpose is and I want to discover what that is. That actually is a destination. Okay, plug into the GPS, discovering my purpose, and you'll find you'll be led to places that help you get, get, uh, gain experiences and knowledge and other things that are going to help make that more clear. So don't get caught up on, oh, you know, I, it's not about the destination, all, the, all these kind of axioms. Ultimately, this is how the process works. You can't calibrate the universal GPS and have life come in and help you if you're not using your side of the process, which is your incredible power of intention. Another great way, just really quick to describe this is if you have no destination, it's like having a ship going out to sea without a crew. Where's it going to end up? It could end up anywhere, usually nowhere. Usually it's going to get caught in a storm and be destroyed or end up on a deserted island. It's not going to be a favorable result. But if you have a crew on that ship, if you have a destination in mind and you just keep moving towards that destination with this crew that's going to help you get there, then guess what? You're going to end up at your destination. And it's the same when it comes to this process. Now you might ask questions like, well, how do I determine my destination? How do I determine what it is I actually want? Well, I have you covered because I have another video I'm going to give you at the end of this video that goes over how to know what it is the best next move is for you, how to start forming a dream and then a definite chief aim and the actual process used by incredibly successful people, information that's been hidden, the actual formula that will help you get there. So if this is something, and it, many people go through this uh, struggle, if this is something you are struggling with, I will give you that resource at the end because I know this particular component of it, a lot of people have questions about and get stuck on. Now let's move into the part of the process that a lot of people fall off at, and that is when the chaos comes up and the inevitable bends in the river come up. You see, the reason chaos comes into our lives is because we don't have an understanding of how the process is working. Something comes up and we believe it must be that we're doing things wrong because there's some chaos. But you are not to know whether that's a a part of the process and you need to go through that in order to get to where you say you want to go. And so when someone's in the river and a bend comes around the corner and you don't know what's on the other side or some rapids come up, this is when a lot of people freak out and they go back into by me or to me. They try and hustle and grind against it to fight it, you know, break through that wall or they jump out of the river because they get scared of the unknown or the bend. But this is just the process playing out. When you can embrace the bends in the river, when you can stay calm in the midst of the chaos, you know, surrounded by the chaos, this is when the magic starts to happen. If you do the work and trust the process, you know, and know that that GPS is going to take you to where you want to go, knowing that the river is going to take you to where you want to go and embrace those bends, you will make more progress than 99% of people because most people, even when they start to get a little good at this, they take a step forward, some chaos comes up or a bend in the river comes comes through and they take a step back and they're in this perpetual forward back a uh, step forward and step back because of this because they get scared when the chaos comes up which is a necessary component of the process now the reason people freak out when there's a bend in the river or chaos comes up when they're following the universal GPS is because what's showing up in their physical world does not fit the pictures that are in their mind. But remember, we're not following the mind here that only wants to work with the known. We are following the unknown, meaning there has to be chaos and things you don't expect and certain things breaking down so new things can be formed. And so when a bend comes in the river, it's going to trigger and upset the mind and create massive resistance because from a non-linear bigger picture uh, perspective, something much bigger is going on and the mind 
can't really handle that. And if you go the route of the mind, you're just going to end up back where you started or again, taking that step back. But if you understand, again, the river is only taking you to where you want to go, that this is a necessary part of the process, you remain calm in this storm, then you'll realize that one of three things, or usually all these things are happening when this chaos comes up and it serves a purpose. Now here are the things that are usually going on when the chaos comes up um, or when the bend comes in the river. It is either one, actually everything is going according to plan and you just have to have some things break down, for example. Uh, number two is the river of life is looking after you uh, to help you avoid an unseen waterfall ahead. So it could be that you thought you should have taken a left on the river, but it's taking you to the right because the left looks quicker, you know, so that the appearance of it looks better and your mind's like, we should go that way. But then you discover later you needed to go to the right because there was a waterfall to the left that would have really delayed your journey or whatever else it is. So that's one other thing that can happen. Happen. And the last thing, it's giving you the perfect opportunity to grow and develop the exact muscle you need to lift the goal you are after. And most likely, again, it's a combination of all three of these. And so, like I said, sometimes these things come up, these challenges, this chaos, because you have to go through that in order to be ready for what's coming around next in the river so that you can also remove certain things that have to be removed for certain things you want to come in to come in. When you go with the side of the mind and you cut off the GPS, this is when it makes it more difficult and when your GPS seems to be more and more silent. But when you start to learn to trust this process, when you start to do the work and trust the process, like we, uh, which is what we like to say with our, our clients, you will start to realize that this GPS becomes more clear. You're able to trust it more because you're getting the evidence of it working. And that's when the magic of this really starts to happen. Now, when you have these factors in place and you start doing the things that we went over, for example, engaging with the river from a place of through me, being in those higher levels of consciousness, having that destination in mind, using your powers as a, a very intentional creator, not falling back when the chaos comes up, understanding that's a natural part of the process and everything else we went over, the GPS of the universe will start to more naturally speak to you much more loudly and clearly. You'll get so much more of of an insight into when it's telling you to turn left or turn right, go straight, take a U-turn or whatever else. And the more you follow that, the more things are going to unfold in amazing ways for you. Now, even if you have a more loud GPS that you hear more clearly, obviously at the end of the day, it is on you whether you're going to actually take that left, take the right and take the action. And so I would invite you to really make sure you are taking those actions and to really make sure you're following through with that. And you may get again, caught up in your head at some time again in the future. It still happens to me. It still happens to people who are really good at this from time to time. But the sooner you can recalibrate, get back tuned into that GPS, get back tuned into the river and coming from a through me place, the quicker you're going to be back on track in the perfect direction for you. Now, like I mentioned, if you don't have a destination in mind, if you don't know where you're going, you're going to really struggle to do this. And so I go watch this video next. It's absolutely free to go watch where I give you the full system on how to determine what destination to go to, how to basically put that into the GPS and get it so that you're now moving more naturally in that direction. It is an insanely, insanely valuable video. So please, I would invite you to go check that out next.